What we're here about today is something very, very simple. This morning, we filed a lawsuit, which is about broken promises to the children and the parents of New York City. Fifteen years ago, a group of people came together and dedicated 15 years of their lives to making a better educational experience for the children of this city. And it took them 15 years in the Contract for Excellence lawsuit, which we won. And once we won that, a group of us, including the UFT and many of the people here, worked diligently to come up with a plan that would ensure a better educational experience for the children of New York City. And what this all comes down to today, the reason we filed this lawsuit, is because part of that plan has now become a broken promise. There was a pledge by the Department of Education that they would use the funding, which is over three quarters of a billion dollars, they would dedicate that funding to reducing the class sizes in New York City. And that is not what has happened. So in that pledge, it was clear. The first year, $152 million. The second year, $302 million. The third year, $305 million. All to be used for class size reduction in the city of New York. It is an example of gross mismanagement. New York City now has the highest class sizes in the entire state. So I am here and I ask you all, $760 million for what? It is clear from everything that we see that there is the deliberate, intentional breaking of a contract that the Chancellor of New York City, Joel Klein, signed with the State Education Department. And we are going to move this as uh, vigorously as we possibly can because it's now more important than ever that we make sure that money is, that is dedicated for the classroom gets into the classroom. Because that's what's got to happen. We have to get the money into the classroom. That's where it belongs. This state has upheld its end of the bargain. They did what they're supposed to do. It is the city now who's not doing it. And think of the irony of this. It was the city who needed, it was the city of New York we needed to sue to get the right funding for these children for class size. This was filed. We won the lawsuit, and now it's the city who won't lower the class size. We are hoping that this lawsuit is a wake-up call for everyone. People are very concerned about this. The elected officials at the state level are very concerned about the class sizes. Their issue is exactly what I just stated before. We sent the money. We've do, we're doing, we're upholding our end of this bargain. So we need to do something to make sure the Department of Ed is doing it. I'd now like to bring to the podium the public advocate of New York City, Mr. Bill de Blasio. Thank you, and I'd like to start uh, speaking first as a parent. Um, I appreciate Mike Mulgrew because as much as he is an advocate for folks who teach our kids, he is equally an advocate for our kids and our parents. And that is very, very important to me, and I think to all the parents of New York City. Because what is being pointed out today with the, this report and these revelations is that promises aren't being kept. And in effect, as much as a law was passed, an agreement was made with Albany, after years of struggle to finally get New York City its fair share, to finally make sure that kids could be educated properly, that those promises are now not being kept. We don't get a very clear picture of enforcement or monitoring. In fact, it sounds like a dynamic where it's very easy to supplant the uh, function that that money was supposed to go for and to use it for something else. From a parent's point of view, um, there's nothing more important than reducing class size. I, mean, I don't need to take a public opinion poll to know this. Um, the way parents interpret uh, a teacher's ability to help their child is through the lens of how big is the class. And it stands to reason that the class is smaller, the teacher can spend more time with each child, and particularly children who need more help. And so 
on, in the first instance, reducing class size should be our number one goal. Uh, but when it is a matter of law, it's not up for the city of New York to selectively interpret the law. Uh, this was determined legally. It is their obligation to follow this. I would now like to bring up old President Scott Stringer. And what's happening in this fiscal crisis is the moment that parents feel that a classroom is too overcrowded or you can't get into the school of choice, you pack up, you take your tax dollars with you, and you flee this city just like what happened in the 1970s. And that's why we can't allow this to stand. I have been talking to parents who ask me all the time, how come they're hiring all these high-priced consultants? Where do they get the money from? Where do they get the money for these bureaucrats to tell us that our schools are overcrowded and there's nothing else we can do? And quite frankly, until this morning, I had no answer. But I do today. $700 million goes into this black bureaucratic hole, sort of like the universe, and we suddenly things get sucked up and we don't know where the money is. Well, we do know where the money is. People, some people are getting paid, and other people are being left behind. But in the meantime, I believe it's time that we audit that bureaucracy at Tweed from top to bottom and figure out where all the money is so we can put it into our classrooms. Thank you very much. I would now like to bring up the state chair of the NAACP, Ms. Hazel Dukes. Yes, I come to stand with UFT today on this issue. It is about time that we demand, we are taxpayers, my children, at New York City, because they are immigrants, because they come from the Caribbean, because they are Hispanic, they deserve under the Constitution of the United States the right for quality education. And one of it is small class size. I will fight with UFT till hell freeze over. And everyone here is supportive of school choice, but has three platforms. Better curriculums, enhanced teaching, and smaller classes but yet where we have the majority of our students in large public schools, the average class size is beyond 30 students per class. Remember, these numbers give you the average, my friends. They don't give you the class sizes of 36, 40, 45 students in high schools where they've decided that they can put two classes together and teach 50 students and expect them to learn. Now, on a, I think it's critically important that we recognize what's happening here in our school system. I have to speak for the Latino community and tell you that our achievement gap is widening, our dropout rate is increasing, and if we want to be competitive in this city and in this country, we have to reinvest in the most important group that we have, which is our children. And in New York City, we are systemically failing these children, and there is no accountability around how these dollars are coming in and how they're being used in the New York City public school system. Enough is enough. Thank you so much. And I want to thank the UFT and Scott and Bill for being true advocates for our community. I said it this morning, and I'm going to say it here. There is caring, and there is caring. And when you take action like this, you really show where you stand as it relates to the communities that live and need New York City to deliver for them. I'm here to speak not just as the executive director of Class Size Matters, but as a public school parent with a son in the sixth grade. I just want to make clear that the class size increases we've seen in recent years are unprecedented for as long as we have data, uh, for as, as much as 11 years. Um, class sizes in kindergarten are larger than they've been since 1999 to 2000, in first through third grades, larger than they've been since 2001 to 2002. I'm also here to speak for parents in the Bronx, where class sizes have increased so radically that, for example, in District 11 in the Bronx, more than 50 percent of kindergarten students are in classes of 25 or more this year. That is clearly unacceptable and is depriving these kids of what they need to learn and to grow. We believe there's been deliberate intent on their behalf not to follow this plan. They signed the contract. This money is for the classroom. I can't be any clearer on that point.